Hey, greetings everyone, it's Chris here. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since my last report. Uh, it's today's Saturday, April 18th. It is getting harder and harder to track the days. Uh, little man wants up. I'm bringing little man in. Maximus the Doxy Poo. Uh, so, wanted to give a COVID report from Alaska. The I think the number of cases we've got is right around 300 or approaching 300. Uh, number of deaths attributed to COVID at this point is, a, I think it was nine the last I saw, it might be higher by one or two. Our rates are low. When I look at the 50 states stacked up, I go to Worldometer uh, to look for the data daily just because I'm, you know, curious. Alaska and Wyoming seem to be in competition for dead last amongst the states. I also noticed Guam's, Guam's down there, um, but we're doing fairly well. Uh, we do, most of us have a, a shelter in place a mode at this point. In Anchorage, for instance, it's a, it's a mandate coming out of the municipality, except for, you know, exceptions uh, where there's critical, uh, you know, critical staff are required for certain industries. I did go out to uh, local Fred Myers in Wasilla yesterday. Uh, there was quite a bit of traffic in there. I did notice it was, <clears throat> as far as face masks goes, about 50-50. Seems like about 50% of the people had them, 50% of the people didn't. Um, uh, I guess I'm a little, uh, maybe not shamed, but I, I had a face mask but didn't wear it in. Um, and I wish I had, because I, I was looking around the parking lot and didn't see that a lot of people had it. So I said, oh, okay, well. I have been in my house for 13 days at that point, so I was pretty confident that I wasn't uh, a carrier. But the way I feel about face masks is that it's not so much for me, is that it is for, um, it's a courtesy to others, right? Because I think that's the main thing, is you're not going to be spreading whatever germs you may have, whether you have them or not, but you're not spreading them, right? The face mask keeps your particles in. So on future expeditions, which could be another two weeks from today, um, I'll probably wear a face mask. I should wear a face mask. That would be, yeah, that's, that's what I should do, and I know it. So anyway, um, yeah, I think uh, the, the, the numbers are what they are, and if you were to Google Alaska COVID, you'll come to the Department of Health and Social Services website, and all the data is there. What's, interest, what's interesting and probably a little more concerning to me about COVID is the impact that it's had on the, the, the economy and the markets. Um, in Alaska specifically, and I mentioned this in a previous video, uh, the oil, the price of oil is um, devastating to Alaska right now. The, the war between the Saudis and Russia uh, trying to gain control over global markets, well, it's driven the price down to a point where it's really starting to impact uh, the oil industry here in Alaska. So I'm going to look at... I'm not going to talk about that specifically, but related to the economics of COVID, I'm going to look at a Department of Labor uh, report that was produced kind of identifies what some of the impacts are to industry, especially specifically uh, businesses that have been put into a shutdown mode. You can kind of see what um, historical uh, employment salaries have been for the, the, the month of April looking back. So we'll take a look at that. Now first we can look at the document published by the Alaska Department of Labor and Workforce Development. It's Alaska Economic Trends. You can ask, access it at labor.state, no, labor.alaska.gov forward slash trends forward slash APR20.pdf. Don't think you need the little uh, tag on the end of that to access the document. <clears throat> so this is fairly recent. It is April 2020. And there's some interesting information here, specifically about uh, the economy uh, and the impact of COVID on the Alaska economy. There's a letter from the commissioner here. Uh, it's fairly interesting. You know, one of the highlights of uh, her note here is that the federal government has implemented the CARES Act, which provides st stimulus through unemployment uh, agencies within states uh, to the tune of 600 bucks a week up to uh, for additional benefits on top of what um, unemployed workers would normally get through their normal uh, unemployment insurance. And that's pretty significant given that if we scroll down, I'm just going to hit a couple of highlights through here. So this document, it does talk in terms of planning horizons short term being April and May of this year, medium term being June through December, and then long term. And there's going to obviously there's impacts related to COVID in each of these periods. Um, but I did want to get specifically, they talk about 
uh, from April of 2019, here's what wages were looking like across the various industries. And, and you can see job counts, you can see total amount uh, in payroll. So that's interesting if you're gonna, if you're interested in this, you can look at it. Uh, the total, uh, somewhere they describe the total is one billion, right? So there's a billion dollar in private sector wages um, for last April. So that kind of gives us a baseline to compare April 2022. And so we can see here, uh, this chart shows just the unemployment claims uh, jump. I'm going to increase the size here a little bit so it shows up on screen better. So you can see a spike, right? As soon as we hit uh, March of 2020, unemployment came, claims went from an average of just 2,500 roughly, if you look at it over the last uh, year or so, to over 14,000 within a 30-day time period, which is uh, significant. And this is where they talk about uh, normal, uh, normal unemployed Alaskan, the average, is going to receive about 250 a week in benefits up with a maximum of up to 370 per week. So on a monthly basis, that would mean for at uh, the maximum you would have, what is that, 370 times 4 is going to be $1,480 per month. That is the maximum unemployment that an Alaskan can get. But with this additional 600 um weekly that that brings the average or the the maximum up to a potential of nine nine hundred and seventy which is just thirty dollars short of a thousand which means uh, alaskan recipients of unemployment could see an unemployment check of up to uh, that would be thirty eight eighty per month right so simply just uh, thirty yeah thirty times four minus four thousand would give me thirty 880 a month. So that's a significant uh, change, addition to pay. Um, I think it it's, will be very helpful to those who need it. Um, and I think many people do need it. So obviously the claims have jumped significantly. I did want to introduce this concept that I was new to me, was the, the fact that there is this unemployment trust fund that we all pay into as part of our unemployment uh, insurance that we, we, we contribute to on a monthly basis through our employer payroll. And so to give you a little context of what, what the Great Recession back at the financial crisis of 2008-2009, they saw unemployment uh, benefits paid, they crept up to a, a, a high, right, when we look back over the previous couple of decades. It was definitely uh, a bit of a spike at that point, although it leveled down. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see where the volume of uh, funds paid, you know, what the balance looks like as we move past this period. So a little bit of historical context. Uh, and you can access this document and look at it in more detail. It's uh, it's interesting. It shows you, uh, so when we look, talk about the, the fund, and there is this unemployment insurance trust fund, um, you know, some, some states are, are doing better than others at funding the fund, right? And so this red line indicates the minimum uh, level uh, the, the, a fund balance in order for it to be solvent. And let's see it, it. Well, and I don't know what that dollar amount is. I imagine it's somehow percentage based on the number of employees. Um, but you can see Alaska is doing all right. Our fund is definitely meets the minimum level of solvency, um, which bodes well for us. And when you read the details, it, the details imply that the fund balance will be okay. Um, that you know they are well funded. Um, you know, and they also emphasize that the Federal CARES Act has definitely helped to soften the burden on the fund, that that $600 a week that the feds are paying, in addition, is a significant uh, injection of cash into the economy for those that are going to be eligible. Um, the document also talks about the, you know, if, you, if you've tried to apply for uh, unemployment insurance, you may have faced long wait times on the phone. Uh, they're talking about uh, staffing up to accommodate the increase in traffic, uh, augmenting some of their IT systems, which I'm a fan of. I'm, I'm in the business of technology, and actually I know some people that work in the Department of Labor, so I know that they're probably busy and on it, trying to uh, make sure that their systems can meet the demand. Uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit. So I thought this was, it talks a little bit about what the typical household expenditures are. So if you look at this, you can see, you know, when you go into crisis mode, a lot of these things are going to go by the wayside. I think 
Um, restaurants will probably take a big hit, recreation, medical and groceries even. Um, I think you might see, at least in my house, we saw a spike in our grocery bill and then we, we haven't been to the grocery store uh, except for I went for a $40 trip yesterday, but our, we really stocked up and then our costs went way down. Recreation, we, there is no recreation uh, expense in our house at this point for this month and next month's likely to be the same. Restaurants we don't go to. So you're likely to see a, a compression on some of these household expense items. This chart just shows the difference between the highest household incomes and the lowest on some standard classes of expense. That's interesting if you're care to look at that this is what I was interested in looking at was you have these are the job categories that are likely to be hit specifically by uh, the COVID with stay-at-home orders uh, non-essential workplaces being shut down we see museums and zoos movie theaters performing arts pull tabs bingos tanning tattoos drinking places gyms etc these are all places where people are employed and so you can see uh, the number of employees in each one of these and then down below it gives you some idea of the wages that are paid through these right so this represents for the month of march and now we're headed into april uh, a significant loss in uh, uh, wages to the local economies which has kind of a trickle down effect and we'll look at that a little bit down here you can see um, this document is chocked full of all kinds of good data. I'm not going to look at it all. Um, I do want to point out, you know, Alaska does have a very strong tourism industry, and this year is going to get clobbered. They're talking about some of the cruise lines completely canceling trips, and they bring up millions of visitors every year. And so I wanted to look at this. So what they anticipate is that how many jobs would Alaska lose if we had no summer this year in tourism and you can see that they're estimating about 18,265 jobs and so I don't I don't think that they provide the detail on what the average wage would be for that person but if we say the season is May, June, July, August so I'll just leave it to four months because September is kind of a down month although you could count it just running a quick calculation on the impact let's say I'll say average monthly wage of 3500 Maybe that's high, maybe that's low. Uh, jobs affected. And then months. And we run this times this times this. We come out with $252 million. So when we talk about a down, a down year for... Um, the Alaska tourism industry, and I'm actually going to show this slide in a uh, this chart in, a, in another part of this video. Yeah, we're looking at a quarter of a billion dollars worth of wages uh, that could be impacted just this summer. So it's not an insignificant contribution to the economy in Alaska. So COVID uh, could be, yeah, it's going to be quite hurtful. Uh, and kudos to the Department of Labor for putting out this document. I look forward to the, the May version. I'll be reading that as well. Um, it has a lot of information. We talked a little bit brief, just before about the trickle-down nature of what's happening. So in this example, you got a bartender who's unemployed, can't make rent. That impacts the landlord's ab ability to pay their own taxes and potentially mortgage on the property that they're renting. Uh, taxes fall. That impacts city's budget. Um, and then the cycle continues right so as much as as much as we can uh, the federal stimulus will be helpful uh, helping to open businesses in a safe way will be very helpful as well i think almost everybody's ready to get back to some sort of economic normalcy um, and so that's uh, yeah, a brief look at the covid's impact on alaska through the lens of the department of labor uh, and workforce development so kudos to them on that I did want to look also, I mentioned briefly that the oil, uh, you know, what's happening in the oil markets is, is, has been devastating for Alaska. And to some degree, that's kind of taken a side sideline to what's happening with COVID. But we have here the Department of Labor, or Department of Revenue for the state of Alaska produce daily. I don't know if they update this daily or weekly, but they have uh, Alaska North Slope, West Coast. This is the, uh, the price of a barrel of Alaskan oil. So you can see it tracking from March of 2020 when it was up in the 50s today just last last 
Thursday or Friday, closing out at $16.33 a barrel, which is horrible. Right? It's horribly low. So when we chart this out. Let's bump this back up to 100. I've got two tabs here. One's going to look at production volumes and one's going to look at prices. And you can see that, so this is our prices over just a month and a half. It's the same as that chart of data that we just looked at or the table of data. I brought it into Google Sheets here. So you can see that we're tracking on this chart uh, ANS, uh, West Texas Intermediate, and then Brent Crude. They all track closely to each other. My understanding is Brent is a higher quality oil. I'm not an expert on oil, but you can see that they're all tracking downwards with uh, with Alaska's uh, North Slope being the blue down here below $20 a barrel, which is not good. When we look at the production curve, so the, the amount of oil that's being that's flowing through the pipeline down into Valdez where they put it on ships and tanker it out, it's about, stayed about the same. So the, the question, and I'm not an expert, I'm not an economist, uh, petroleum economist or an engineer or anything like that, but at what point does does price impact volume, right? Because at um, some point, if, if you're not making the same amount, you can, only, you can only pump as much as you can pump, and I think there might be physical limitations on how much oil can come out of the ground, but you might not want to, you might not be able to make money selling oil at these prices. So uh, something to watch, right? So while the volume has stayed uh, consistent and, and right about 450 well actually it's like between 500 and 470 is what the volume's at so if we track this column here column F you can see that it's been consistently about a half a million barrels a day of production so it's starting to dip a little bit over these last few days but that's could be statistical noise there's other periods where it dips below 500 for sure so interesting uh, a look at Alaska's uh, high-level indicators for oil. And the last thing that I wanted to uh, to review was the, the actual coronavirus data that I mentioned before. Um, and the uh, Alaska Department of Health and Social Services publishes, and they do a good job of keeping up to date on the number of cases that they had. So this was updated just within the last day or two. There were five new cases, they say yesterday. Today is the 18th. Uh, we had 314 cases total, 147 have recovered, which is great. We got 36 hospitalizations and nine individuals have died in Alaska due to COVID. So um, these are the numbers. I think, uh, you know, I won't say they're great. Obviously people are dying and people are sick, so that's that's not good. But I think Alaska is doing a good job of helping, helping to flatten the curve, which is really the goal uh, here in the short term. Anyway, that's... Uh, that's the COVID update from Wasilla, Alaska, April 18th, a Saturday. I hope you're all doing well. Take care, be safe, maintain your social distance, wash your hands. Uh, we'll see you next time.